Hi, welcome back to Smarter Marketing. I'm Terry, the CEO of Merit Marketing Services, and we are continuing our nonprofit November series. Today's episode, we're going to dive deep into the fundamental aspect of nonprofit organizations and how to write a mini marketing plan for your fundraising campaign. Fundraising is the lifeblood of many nonprofits and crafting a well-structured marketing plan is really the compass that's going to guide your fundraising goals. So let's break it down step by step, providing insights on how to create the strategy. The very first thing that we need to talk about is identifying your fundraising goal. You will have a specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound, yes, SMART goals, And that goal could be something as specific as $10,000 for the new stairs within the next six months so we can have them ready to go by February. Write them down and they're gonna be our anchor throughout the planning process. Next is really important when we're thinking about this mini marketing plan for fundraising campaigns is to know the donor base. Understanding this helps by creating donor personas. I want you to collect and analyze the data on your existing donors. Think about their interests and their motivations and demographics, and then their communication preferences. Do they like emails? Do they like text messages? Is it important for them that they follow you on social media and see what's happening there? That data and information is going to be the foundation that we're going to use to tailor our messaging. We want to reach them individually where they are. After we identify who they are and what our goal is, we talk about the message. As we develop the compelling fundraising message, we need to think about the heart of the campaign. This is the why. Why are you raising money? What is this fundraising about? Why does it matter? Explain your cause and how those contributions, this fund that you're trying to raise, will have tangible impact. If you use emotive language and storytelling to engage the donors on a deeper level, then you're going to have a rallying cry for your campaign. And it is very important to choose the right fundraising channels. Select the channel that we just talked about. Where's your audience? Where are they hanging out? What are they doing? That could be email. That could be text. That could be uh, newsletters, for example. If you have a short-term goal, Concentrate on digital marketing and make it easy for them to give you money. So let me interject here because I want to say it's important that you have the steps in place before you do your marketing to receive funds. Check processing. Are they mailing it in? Are you depositing it timely so it clears out of their bank account? Do you use online platforms? Zelle, Venmo, PayPal? Make sure that it's set up properly and you test it. Do people come in and give you cash? Do you have the security available to receive on-site donations? What's your policy? How do you handle money? Is it, you know, $10? Does it go into a lockbox? Do you have a drop box that they can put it in so that way one or two people are counting it at the end of the night? Think about the steps to receive the money. So always make it easy for them to give you money and then make the processes in place to have that go to the bank and and, uh, accountable as fast as possible. So we've got that all taken care of. You're on digital marketing, you have social media posts and you give them the link to donate by PayPal me or your Venmo account, whatever that looks like. Make sure that's done then create the campaign that includes the post, an email, and a website with clear and efficient donation forms. There are certain types of websites that are set up specifically to receive 
donations and you set the goals and the goals could be we're looking to build new steps and help us to reach this fundraising goal. So you can blend the digital effort with the live event or partner alternatively with local businesses. So this well-planned out mail campaign can cast a wider net. So maybe there's a, a mail that goes out and you recognize those people who are sponsoring this step-by-step -step all the way, literally, as we're building a stairway, perhaps, you know, the, the concrete has gone bad. So the local theater needs a new safe entryway to their building. And they did a fundraising campaign and each step came with a price, for example. And so the letter goes out and asks for businesses to sponsor it. So they get closer, a step closer and closer to their goal. Now let's talk about this calendar. We have to think about short-term and long-term goals when we do a calendar. This calendar outlines when each fundraising campaign runs and make sure those are aligned with your organization's overall goals and your events. So the things on this calendar are going to deal with your fiscal year, you're gonna do it, deal it with your annual goals, your revenue and income goals, as well as major external events. Um, in your community, you may have one organization that has one every year in the fall, on the third Thursday, for example, that's Thanksgiving, don't do that. But there is an annual event that you don't wanna step on. Make sure those are clearly outlined on your calendar. Who's running an event this week? And we don't wanna tap out our community, so be cognizant of what else people are donating to in your community. Even if you live in a very generous community, it's very important for you to understand and be respectful that you all, as a nonprofit fundraising collective, aren't tapping out the community or that it's spaced out far enough that people will still be interested throughout the year. So try to work together and collaborate and let the nonprofits know, if possible, that you're planning on doing a fundraiser October 2nd. And you know that the next one, and, and it's easy to get to know these people because you'll get them in your rotary or your chamber, other networking events. So as you're getting involved, you're gonna know what's happening in your community. So just share that information, work together, and be respectful of the community that is donating funds. Next, allocating the resources. Once you determine the budget that you're gonna spend, fundraising is expensive. We have a fee to processing cards. So even if somebody donates $10, you still have a 3% fee. If you can get a nonprofit discount through a lot of the organizations will give you discounts, claim those and help reduce the expense of fundraising. But there are outside fundraisers that cost money and you never get 100% of it unless somebody walks in with cash. So calculate how much you need for marketing, the personnel to run and manage that, and the tools necessary. So that could be technology, that could be you setting up somewhere at an event, and you need things to be there. Ensure that you have the right people and the resources in place for those types of things, the, the in-person, um, your speaking engagements, being able to receive money online or have somebody send that through you, Facebook, whatever that looks like, Venmo, make sure those tools are set up and the people are able and competent enough to be able to manage those effectively. And then of course, that means that there's financial resources and human resources that you have to allocate here. And the budget is that financial blueprint. Now we have to start measuring and adjusting things. We have campaigns, and again, this is our marketing campaigns, these mini campaigns that we're running for fundraising purposes. Think about what those key performance indicators are. What does success look like? 
if you expect 10 donors every month, that is our KPI. We break it down weekly. We check it weekly. Did we hit our goal? Track that and understand what's working and what isn't. If you're not hitting your KPIs, which is the 10 per month, then it's time to make adjustments. Use the data to help figure this out and then navigate through that campaign. And if you have to use, um, think about your expenses also include postage, printing, maybe there's postcards, ads to get out to new people, the cost that it takes for you to get your email software. There's free ones, but maybe you have the expense of email software. Those are all added expenses in your budget. And, and if you need to adjust that, that's why I brought it up here, then consider how you're going to adjust your budget, your financial resources, your technology, and your people. And then, of course, show the impact and the gratitude. After the funds start coming in, it is critical to show the donors the impact they're making in your organization. Share relatable stories, stats, and updates demonstrating how their contributions are being used effectively and make the donor a part of that success story. Express gratitude genuinely through personal thank you messages and social media acknowledgements. And if you have recognition opportunities anytime, you can include them because recognition and appreciation will help you build long lasting donor relationships. By following these detailed steps, you're going to create a mini marketing plan for your fundraising campaign, but I want you to tailor that to those goals that we talked about. What is your goal of fundraising? And then it, just remember, it's not just about raising money, but really building those relationships and then inspiring action. If you talk to a company and they donate $10 today, it may have been a test. They may have a $10,000 donation community spend line item in their budget. So this well-crafted marketing plan, again, showing the impact they're having, giving the gratitude, helping to show others the donors and the donations that are happening well within your organization, you're going to continue to build that trust. And with that trust comes more advocates. And with more advocates comes more volunteers and more funds. So this well-crafted marketing plan, think bigger. It's about guiding yourself to achieve those fundraising objectives and ultimately make a positive impact through your organization. I want to thank you for joining me today on Smarter Marketing. Stay tuned for more valuable insights on marketing in the nonprofit sector in our nonprofit November series.